Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. My name is Krzysztof Wostoszewski. You can find information about me at smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. My advice on how to pass actuarial exams is at smarturl.it forward slash pass. This video channel is at smarturl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. Here you can find information about online seminars and study manuals for exams PFM, IFM, and LTAM that I offer. I direct the actuarial program at Illinois State University. You can find information about it at smarturl.it forward slash actuary. If you would like to offer a tax deductible donation to support our students, please go to smarturl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. The problem for today is uh, a bit unusual because it's not like a real exam problem because of the way the answer works out. It really can't be on the exam. It's just about studying for the exam. It's a, a problem in probability, so it will help you prepare for exam P. Uh, but it's not exactly like the real pr exam problem, as I said, because um, the answer is so obvious, it's too easy almost, uh, but something to think about. The Empire of Babel um, uh, requires uh, its information technology specialist to pass a professional examination consisting of 300 multiple choice problems, each with five answer choices. An entrepreneurial startup, Training Nerds Incorporated, offers online courses preparing candidates for the exams. The exam score is an integer between 0 and 10, inclusive of 0 and 10, with 6 being the lowest passing score. The actual exam consists of questions of level of difficulty of 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 in equal number. Um, training uh, Nerds Incorporated, or I should say equal numbers, meaning uh, the numbers of questions of level 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 are each equal. So. 300 divided by uh, 5, and that's uh, 60 question of each level of difficulty. And Training Nerds Incorporated offers the candidates taking their course an option to practice on exams of level of difficulty of 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. If a candidate practices exams of level of difficulty of a certain number consistently, he or she answers questions on that level of difficulty or lower on the exam correctly with probability 0.8. But um, if a candidate um, does not practice a certain level of difficulty, such candidate has only a 20% or 0.20% chance of answering questions of that level or higher um, correctly. The minimum score needed to pass a real exam is 210 questions answered correctly. Use the central limit theorem to provide the um, to approximate the difference in probability that a candidate who studied, studies all levels, so studies for a 10, uh, passes versus a candidate who studies only level 6, uh, 6 or 7 level questions. You can assume that answers to individual questions and st those questions themselves are independent of each other. So here's the solution. We start with a candidate who studies for a 6 or 7. There are 300 questions on the real exam, and of those, there are 120 level 6 or 7 questions and 180 level 8, 9, or 10 questions. Let us write K for the random number of correctly answered level 6 or 7 questions, and L for the num uh, random number of correctly answered uh, level 8, 9, or 10 questions. And K is binomial with parameters n equal to 120 and probability of success P. Point equal to 0.8, while L is binomial with n equal to 180, and probability of success P equal to 0.2. Because both values of n are relatively large, we can use the central limit theorem to approximate K with a normal distribution with mean 120 times 0.8 equals 96, and variance 120 times 0.8 times 0.2, which is 19.2. And to approximate L with a normal distribution with mean 180 times 0.2, which is 36, and variance 180 times 0.2 times 0.8, which is 28.8. Those two distributions are independent, so their sum is approximately normal with mean 96 plus 36. Um, and uh, that's equal to 132 and variance 19.2 plus 28.8, which is 48. 
Let us write W for the normal distribution with mean 132 and variance 48, and Z for the standard normal distribution. Then the probability of passing is a probability that W is more than 210, and that's um, equal to a probability of W minus 132 divided by square root of 48, it being greater than 210 minus 132 over square root of 48. So it's a probability that z, because w minus its mean divided by its standard deviation, is st uh, standard normal. So probability that a standard normal random variable is greater than 210 minus 132 divided by square root of 48. And that's a probability that a standard normal is greater than 11.2583302. You really don't need, at this point, to um, look anything up, do any calculations. You should know that such probability is zero, because uh, if you look at the table that is given on the exam, it only shows uh, values up to four times the standard deviation. Beyond that, standard normal distribution is probably is basically zero chance of being there, based on that table. This is 11 times, more than 11 times the standard deviation. So if you study for 6 or 7 um, in this situation, your chances of passing are 0. Well, what happens if you study for a 10? Uh, well, now we consider a candidate who studies for a 10. For such a candidate, um, each question is a Bernoulli trial with probability of success of 0.8. The total number of correct answers is binomial with parameters n equal to 300 and p equal to 0.8 and as such is approximately normal with mean 30 times, I'm sorry, 300 times 0 0.8 equals 240 and variance 300 times 0 0.8, I'm sorry, times 0.2, that's a typo, um, so times 0 0.2 which is 48. Let us write v for that normal distribution, then property that v is more than 210 is probability that v is v minus 240 over square root of 48 is greater than 210 minus 240 over square root of 48. Well, that's equal to probability that the standard normal random variable is greater than 210 minus 240 over square root of 48. That's a probability that z is greater than negative 4.330127, and at this point you immediately know that's probability of approximately 1. And the difference of probability of passing for uh, for a candidate who studies to get a 10 versus a candidate who studies to get a 6 or 7 is therefore 1 minus 0, so it's 1. Uh, and this is why you need to study for a 10, because you probably would like to pass this exam. Just a thought. Please remember this is copyrighted material. The problem was created by me, and the solution is mine. Good luck in your studies and good luck on the test.